Today's lesson is called Coffee Culture Around the World. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we're going to talk about coffee. And we're not going to talk specifically about coffee itself, like what to order when you go to Louisa or Starbucks or Dante or whatever. But we're going to talk about different coffee cultures around the world, how people in different countries drink and consume coffee, and how they do it, and what it means for their culture, and what it means to their daily lives, and stuff like that. Yeah, for the last ten years, I've lived here in Taiwan, and I have noticed that coffee culture has become a big thing here. There are many different coffee shops where you can buy pretty much any type of coffee under the sun. Ten years ago, it wasn't like that, but the coffee culture here in Taiwan is really exploding, or it has exploded over the last decade or so. Now, me, I don't really take coffee. All that seriously. I go to Costco and I buy the、uh, the packets, the drip coffee packets, and that's good enough for me. But I know some people who take their coffee very seriously. They take coffee and also coffee culture very, very seriously. Anyways, let's talk about coffee culture. Let's get started. Coffee culture around the world. According to legend, coffee was first discovered and produced in Ethiopia in the ninth century. Since then, coffee has spread across the world, with many countries adopting their own ways of brewing and serving this aromatic drink. 大家好，第一部分我们看到名词 Ethiopia， 意思是伊索比亚。例如 ，My cousin used to live in Ethiopia when he was little. 我表哥小时候曾住过伊索比亚。另外，在这个字的字尾加上 n， 就成了形容词 Ethiopian， 指伊索比亚的。像是 Linda took me to an Ethiopian restaurant last weekend。上周末 ，Linda 带我去一间伊索比亚餐厅。接下来，我们看到一个单字 brew， 这个字是动词，指冲咖啡、泡茶、酿啤酒。我们可以说。Jeff brewed a pot of coffee as soon as he woke up. Jeff 一起床就先煮了一壶咖啡，或是 Leonard brews his own beer. Leonard 会自己酿啤酒。另外，除了上面的意思，这个字还可以指酝酿，即将发生。像是 Since Billy's leadership was so poor, dissatisfaction was brewing among his teammates. 由于 Billy 的领导才能太差，队友间酝酿着不满。或是 Reporters warned that a storm is brewing. 记者警告有一个暴风正在成型中。再来，我们看到一个形容词 aromatic， 指有香味的、芳香的。例如 ，an aromatic bath can help reduce stress and anxiety. 芳香浴可以减轻压力和焦虑。另外，这个字去掉字尾 t i c， 就成了名词 aroma， 指香味、香气。举例来说。The hungry dog followed the aroma of cooking sausages all the way to Mr. Wu's restaurant. 那只饥饿的狗随着煮香肠的味道一路跟到吴先生的餐厅。或是 As I walked in the garden, I smelled the aroma of flowers. 我走在花园里的时候闻到花的香气。Okay, let's talk about how coffee is drunk and consumed in different parts of the world. But what the heck? Where did it come from? Well, according to legend, coffee was first discovered and produced in Ethiopia in the ninth century. That does not surprise me. Lots of things got their start in Africa, including the human race. Ethiopia is a country in eastern Africa. And Addis Ababa is the capital of Ethiopia, and of course, the legend here says that、uh, coffee was discovered there in Ethiopia. Not only discovered there, but also produced there way back 
in the ninth century, which would be the 800s. There you go, Ethiopia. Not only do they produce world-class distance runners, but also they are behind coffee. Yeah, how about that? Now, since then, coffee has spread across the world, with many countries adopting their own ways of brewing and serving this aromatic drink. And I've got to say this before we move on here. In England, they still kind of fetishize their tea, but you know what? I think they're starting to come around. Tea is delicious. Tea is great, but in the morning, I can't think of a better way to start the morning than with a nice hot cup of joe. I love my coffee in the morning. I'm not a coffee purist or anything like that. I don't take my coffee all that seriously, but it is a great pick me up in the morning. Anyways, let's get back to this sentence. There's a lot going on there. It says here many countries have adopted their own ways of brewing and serving this aromatic drink. So, if something is aromatic, by the way. It smells really, really good. And coffee in the morning. Oh, I can't think of a better way to wake up than smelling the scent of that freshly brewed coffee. It's very aromatic. It's got a great aroma. That's what they say, and I guess I agree with that. But I'm not one of those people. Who needs a jolt of caffeine in the morning? I guess I'm a morning person, so I'm pretty awake in the morning anyway, whether I drink tea or coffee or water. But still, I can appreciate that smell of coffee. It is very aromatic. Okay, so yes, indeed, since that time, since the ninth century, coffee has spread across the world or around the world, you could also say. And then we go on with many countries adopting their own ways. Of enjoying coffee, so here with just means in addition to that, or it's just giving this as an example of how it has spread across the world, and we can see that there are lots of countries that have adopted their own ways of consuming coffee. To adopt here usually means that you start using this as a policy or as a way of doing things. You、uh, come to know this, people introduce it to you, and you think, "Hey, that's pretty cool. I think I'll do that myself. I will." Adopt your ideas. I will start using them myself. So here, countries have adopted their own ways. Yeah, you guys do it pretty well there in、uh, you know in the Middle East there, but you know here things are different. We'd like to kind of do it slightly differently, and we'll enjoy it better that way. So we're adopting a new way to enjoy coffee. For example, usually people use this word "adopt" when they're talking about children or animals. Okay, let's say you. Decide to adopt a child. That means you go to an orphanage or something like that, and you say, "You know what? We're going to take this child home with us and raise this child as if it were our own. We can't have our own babies, let's say, so we're going to adopt this child and raise this kid as though it were our own flesh and blood." And you can do the same thing with animals. You go to a shelter and say, "You know what? We are going to adopt this animal before it belonged to someone else. We're not the original owners, but." We are going to take this animal and love it and raise it as though it were our animal originally. Anyways, though, here, Ethiopia—that's where the coffee came from. They had their own ways of making coffee that went back a thousand years, but other countries like their coffee, and they've adopted their own ways of making coffee. By the way, when you do make a cup of coffee, you Brew that cup of coffee. That's the idea here.、Uh, yeah, you can also brew tea and you can brew beer, but you don't brew vodka or gin or whiskey. I think you、uh, ferment those or you just simply make them. But、uh, here, if you want to talk about coffee, we usually use the word brew. And after you brew the coffee, you're going to serve it as well. And there are different ways to serve coffee. And it smells great. Let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen to it first. In Ethiopia, coffee is at the center of an elaborate ceremony that can last hours. The ceremony is performed by the lady of the house, who dresses in white, carefully brews the coffee, and pours the liquid by holding the pot high above the cups without spilling a drop. The drink is usually served with sugar, sometimes with salt, and with popcorn or peanuts on the side as a treat. Guests are expected to drink at least three cups and praise the woman for her coffee preparation skills. Second part, we see a word elaborate. Elaborate. This word is a synonym for elaborate, 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 el
精致的，像是 The walls of the restaurant were decorated with elaborate, colorful patterns. 那家餐厅的墙面以色彩缤纷的图案精心装饰。另外，这个字也可以是动词，指详尽说明。当动词时念作 elaborate。我们可以说 I'm not sure I completely understand your point. Can you elaborate? 我不确定我完全了解你的论点。能请你详尽说明一下吗？最后，我们看到动词 spill， 指使洒出、溅出。举例来说 ，The baby spilled the milk onto the ground. 小宝宝把牛奶洒到地上了。另外，这个字也可以是名词，指洒出、溢出物。我们可以说 ，Please give me some paper napkins so that I can clean up the spill. 请给我一些纸巾，好让我清理掉这些洒出来的东西。Okay, Ethiopia. Okay, that's where our article began, and that's where coffee began as well. Let's learn a little bit about the coffee culture there in Ethiopia, the birthplace of coffee. In Ethiopia, coffee is at the center of an elaborate ceremony that can last hours. So if you sit down in Ethiopia and you ask for a cup of coffee, who knows? You might be sitting there for a few hours before you actually get your morning joe. That sounds kind of similar to the tea ceremony in Japan. It's going to take a long time. There are a lot of things to know about green tea in Japan. So here in、uh, Ethiopia, of course, it's quite elaborate. Here, elaborate means it involves a lot of details. So, for example, you might、uh, have somebody tell you a story that has a lot of elaborate details, lots of extra information. That could be very interesting, but in this particular case, this ceremony is elaborate. It has lots of different steps that are quite interesting. So yes, indeed, prepare to spend several hours during an Ethiopian coffee ceremony. It's complicated. There are lots of moving parts. There are many details. Okay, that's the idea here behind this word "elaborate." We're using it as an adjective. You can use this word as a verb. You can say, "Please elaborate," i.e., give me more information. Fill in the blanks here with some more details. So here we've got an elaborate ceremony. By the way, a ceremony. It's kind of like a ritual. Okay, it's something that you do involving many steps that usually achieve. Achieves something. Very often, a ritual or a ceremony will be held out in a church during worship or something like that. You want to celebrate something, okay? You want to do something to honor someone or something. You can put on a ceremony. Basically, you got a series of acts that you put together that you have to do in a certain order. That's usually prescribed by tradition. Anyways. Ethiopia. They've been making coffee for over a thousand years, so they have developed this ceremony. Okay, when they make coffee, they do it one way, and we'll learn all about this right now. Get this: the ceremony is performed by the lady of the house, who dresses in white, carefully brews the coffee, and pours the liquid by holding the pot high above the cups without. Spilling a drop, so I get the idea that if you do go to Ethiopia and you want a good cup of coffee, you don't go to Starbucks or McDonald's or anything like that. You go ahead and you visit someone at their house, and you have to go through this elaborate ceremony. Now that might take a long time, but what will result is an outstanding cup of coffee. Also, the ceremony kind of sounds cool as well. The lady of the house dresses in white for you, carefully brews the coffee, and then pours the liquid by holding the pot high above the cups. And this is important: you can't spill a drop. So she's probably very skilled at this. And again, it is performed by the lady of the house, the woman who is in charge of the household. And she dresses in white, and then she brews the coffee. Remember, we said you brew coffee. You could also say make coffee. It's the same thing. And of course, if you're Moving liquid from a large container to a smaller container, you are pouring the coffee, or you're pouring the tea, or you're pouring milk from a carton into a glass. So that's the verb to pour. So she pours the liquid, but she holds that pot high above the cups, and she does not spill a drop. Of course, if、uh, liquid goes in different directions and goes on the table or the floor. To places where you don't want it to, then we're saying you spill. 
spill that liquid. Oh, I spilled water on the floor. Get a mop. I need to clean it up. But here she's so skilled, she will not spill a drop. Not even one small drop of coffee will be wasted. Yeah, she sounds like she's very good at what she does. That's probably not an easy thing to do at all. I know that my daughter here, she'll spill anything in any cup in any container. If we're not paying attention, yeah, gosh, if she's not holding that cup with both hands and we're not paying attention to her, she will spill her milk or whatever and make a huge mess. I would not want her pouring my coffee for me in the morning. No way, not yet, at least. Anyways, the drink is usually served with sugar and sometimes with salt and with popcorn or peanuts on the side. As a treat, so there you go. The drink is usually served with、mm, something sweet like sugar, sometimes with salt. I've never had salty coffee before, but I could be persuaded to try some. And then on the side,、mm, either some popcorn or peanuts.、Mm, sign me up. I like both popcorn and peanuts. Now guests are expected to drink at least three cups. And praise the woman for her coffee preparation skills. So drink three cups and then say, "Lady of the house, wow, that was the best cup of joe I've ever had. You are the best." Yep, to praise someone for doing something means you basically give them compliments. Oh, you poured that so well. It's so generous of you. It's so、uh, hospitable of you to invite us over and stuff like that. And yes, do be sincere. But I'm sure you'll have no problem with that because I'm sure this is going to be quite tasty in the Ethiopian coffee ceremony. Okay, let's move on now to talk about Turkey and the Middle East in the next part of our lesson. Like Ethiopia, Turkey and the Middle East have a centuries-old coffee culture. Served in tiny cups, the coffee is strong, sweet, and often flavored with spices. Dried fruits may also be served with the coffee to reduce its bitterness. In Turkey, where coffee is drunk unfiltered, locals carry on the tradition of telling someone's fortune by reading the coffee grounds in their cup. Okay, moving on. The final paragraph of today's lesson says, "Like Ethiopia, Turkey, and the Middle East have a centuries-old coffee culture." So there you go. They have been drinking coffee in these countries for hundreds and hundreds of years. So their coffee culture there, I should say, has evolved over time. Indeed. So Turkey is a country, of course, in the Middle East. So yeah, they have an interesting coffee culture there in Turkey. And in countries near Turkey, in the Middle East, and it's been going on for centuries. Now, served in tiny cups, the coffee is strong, sweet, and often flavored with spices. Okay, so in this particular case, the coffee is served in tiny cups. I guess kind of like espresso. They're usually served in small cups, or like here in Taiwan, Laoren Sha, traditional Chinese tea is served in tiny cups. But in this particular case, we're talking about coffee, and the coffee is strong, and often flavored with spices. So here we've got the word "flavor" being used as a verb. That means you add something to something in order to change its taste. So in this particular case, maybe the coffee is too strong, so they flavor it with spices. Maybe parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, or whatever. They put those spices in the coffee to give it a different. Different kind of flavor. Their flavor is a noun, but in this sentence, it's being used as a verb. Anyways, dried fruits may also be served with the coffee to reduce its bitterness. There you go. You also have some dried fruits on the side. I'm more of a fan of. Popcorn or peanuts, like in Ethiopia, there. But if I were in Turkey or somewhere else in the Middle East, I would definitely do as the locals do. I would eat those dried fruits. Now, in Turkey specifically, where coffee is drunk unfiltered, locals carry on the tradition of telling someone's fortune by reading the coffee grounds in their cup. So you can read tea leaves, apparently, or you can also read coffee grounds. Interesting. Okay, coffee grounds. Are what's left over after you brew the coffee, and the grounds can be in different places. If you use a paper filter after you're done brewing the coffee, they'll be there in the paper. So yeah, you can read someone's fortune by looking at those coffee grounds. Fortune here 
future just means to tell somebody's future. Fortune usually means lots of money, lots of riches, lots of success, and stuff like that. But yes, we often go to fortune tellers here in Taiwan. They'll probably read your palm, the lines on the palm of your hand. But here in Turkey, they actually read the coffee grounds, and they can predict your future. How about that? All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't worry, don't fret. The Chinese teacher is waiting in the wings. Hello, students. Hello, everyone. 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 Hello, ever
we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.